or SARS-CoV-2, and that is, will the heat hot liquids or warm air through the ventilator, I, I cannot even imagine I'm talking like that, kill the virus. So first of all, this is an educational video. Do not use these concepts here uh, for your self-medications or for your uh, experiments. These are experimental, um, these videos are not meant to be tested at home. And th in this video, I'm going to prove to you that this is not possible, that the virus will be killed, which is inside our body by, by the um, hot fluids or the air without injuring us significantly. So let's talk about it. Hello, Harry, how are you? So let's talk about this. I have a couple of things that I wanna share with you. Number one, I have a whiteboard. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? So today, Rebecca, we are talking about the uh, possibility. So there are many rumors that say that if we um, send hot air in the ventilators, that would help uh, kill the virus. Or uh, if a person takes a hot, hot drink, just like I have the uh, tea over here, that would somehow help kill the virus. So I wanted to make sure that we are um, clear that why would that not happen? Hey, Rachel, how are you? Nermeza, how are you? So we have people from uh, uh, from Facebook with us. We have people from YouTube with us. We are live together at the same time in all those places. So Walaikum Aslam. So let's talk about this. This is a very important uh, concept. My request to you is going to be please share this with others because what I find frustrating is that the rumors and the stupid messages are shared millions of times. And those things that try to prevent and help these are not very lucrative, I guess. These are not very sexy for people to listen to, and they are not listened to very well. And that ends up the wrong messages becoming more prevalent, and that is not good. Thank you very much, Ahmed Imam. Thank you for joining. So let's start our discussion so that it stays short and sweet. So the question again is, will the hot air or the hot fluids uh, kill the virus that is in us. So I'm going to first explain it to you so that you have a clear understanding and then I'll show you a study as well. So let me share my screen. On my screen, you can see that there is a study here that I have opened. This study is the pathophysiological pathophysi basis and consequences of fever. So that is a study. And in this study, there are a few areas that I would like us to look at. And let me first go to the drawing board and show you why this is not possible. So look, for the coronavirus, this virus can stay alive or it can be killed at 56 degrees centigrade heat for 15 minutes. So that is the tolerance of this virus that below 56 degrees, it is not really easy to kill this guy. So 56 degrees are need needed for 15 minutes to kill this virus. Now, this virus, so that is the killing of this virus, killing of SARS-CoV-2. Then is the replication, division, I shouldn't call it division, replication. So it likes to be, it replicates in the host cell. So the, let's say this is a host cell. The optimal temperature for this virus to replicate is 37 degrees centigrade which is our body temperature. And I have mentioned this many times that the human species of the SARS-CoV uh, virus is, uh, or coronavirus, not SARS-CoV virus, human species of the coronavirus can replicate only at 33 degrees centigrade to 35 degrees centigrade. However, the animal species, the SARS-CoV-2, the SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV, they all can replicate at 37 degrees centigrade. That is why they can actually go into any part of our body and cause damage there. So having said that, now let's look at, can we kill a virus which is in our cells? So let's say this is our respiratory system. And here is a cell of the respiratory system. This is another cell. So let's say this is trachea and these are the cells there. And let's say that the virus is sitting here in one of our cells. So this is the virus, good. The virus is sitting here 
and what we are trying to do is we are going to send hot air hot air through this system hot air to kill this virus now please remember this this is very very important our cells can only tolerate up to 41 degree centigrade of heat up to 41 degree centigrade of heat not above that above that and i'll show you the studies above 41 degree centigrade they start coagulating so what is the coagulation what are the me mechanisms that get disrupted so in our cell so let's say if we make a cell here our cells have channels that are transporters these transporters bring in material for example you know that we have sodium channels we have potassium channels i'm not going to draw the channels anymore and then we have glucose channels and we have a bunch of other channels so our cells have channels that they use to transport materials inside and out that is one secondly our cells have enzymes that are machineries that are functioning inside the cell enzymes good at 41 degree centigrade at 41 degree centigrade these channels get distorted and destroyed just like frying an egg the channel protein become coagulated and denatured so the proteins become denatured you know just like you cook meat and in the meat when you give it heat the meat becomes denatured and it becomes it cannot become the raw meat again or if you fry an egg that egg cannot become a fried uh, unfried egg again the the problem is that the proteins become denatured so at 41 degrees centigrade the proteins start becoming de denatured they do not function correctly anymore and the cell start becoming destroyed the enzymes become denatured the things do not work correctly so this is the first concept that i want us to understand that at 41 degree centigrade so if i come in here so i hope this is clear to all of us at 41 degree centigrade our cells start becoming denatured first their outer envelope or the cell membrane starts becoming denatured the the uh, little um, channels in there they become denatured then inside the cell the proteins become denatured so can i then say can i say that it is important to understand that at 41 degree centigrade of heat may it be through the steam or from the hot fluids is going to denature and burn our cells and kind of kill them now think about the virus let's go back here and now check this out virus is sitting in here the virus can tolerate up to 56 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes you have to throw flames at it for 56 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes do you think that if you gave hot air of 56 degree centigrade to try to kill the virus wouldn't that kill this cell before wouldn't that kill this cell before it will so how is this possible then that if i put a person let's say there is a person here and let's say this is his respiratory system here are his lungs and this is the mouth area here is his nose nasal area so how is it possible to give hot air or fluids and not burn the cells in which the virus is present how is that possible so i'm going to repeat this for a second the virus the virus replicates at 37 degrees centigrade the animal form the animal species of SARS-CoV-2 human species replicates at this uh, this level optimal replication the virus can be killed by 56 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes heat only then it can be killed our cells can only tolerate 41 degrees centigrade 
at 41 degrees centigrade, they start coagulating. They start coagulating, they start becoming denatured. Do you think that we can give hot air or hot fluids to kill the virus? Virus is inside the cell. You have, you'll have to burn the cell before. And burning the cell of respiratory system is called acute respiratory distress syndrome. So now if the virus is not going to cause a respiratory distress syndrome, we are going to cause a acute respiratory distress syndrome by giving heat. You're going to kill that patient who you're trying to manage by giving hot air in the ventilator. And if somebody comes to me and says, you know what? So 41 degrees, about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. If you come to me and say, you know what? We'll try to give 104 degree or 103 degree. God, that's going to do nothing to the cell, to the virus. Virus needs 56 degree centigrade. A very high number. It's almost... Uh, doubles. It's almost in 200 degree Fahrenheit level. You are going to burn the patient. So please, this is the basic message here. Let me now show you a study to prove these points. So look at this study. Here is a study about the benefits of fever and counter uh, or, or the uh, destruction of the fe fever. So here, what they're saying is that when a patient has fever up to 40 degrees centigrade, that is up to 400, 104 degree Fahrenheit, patient may benefit from that fever because the antibiotics work better. Number two, because the immune system works better at that uh, in higher temperatures and because the virus like to be and the bacteria and pathogens, they like to um, replicate at 37 or below. So because of all of those reasons, it is actually useful to have some fever. But look at this. What they're saying is, interestingly, at temperature above around 40 degrees centigrade, the mortality rate increases. Even in the patient of sepsis that are sitting in ICU, sepsis is infection. So if the fever or high temperature was going to help someone, that should help the people of sepsis who have infection everywhere in their body and the blood. They should have the advantage of the temperature, but even they have a higher mortality rate when the temperature is above 40 degrees centigrade. Hilian, how are you? Is that, is that clear? Is that clear? And now let's see. One more um, area here. If I go down a little bit, how does the fever really help? So they've talked about the fever's help up, up there. Here, what is the damage of the high temperature? And this is very, very important, cellular damage. And this is what I was talking about, that the damage causes the RNA damage, the DNA damage, the intracellular sodium and calcium channels. They start becoming destroyed. So look at this affecting membrane stability and transmembrane transport, transport proteins. So this, uh, there are many, many other disadvantages that they have discussed here, which uh, you can go and read this for yourself. But I want to discuss one more part that is important, and that is heat shock proteins. In our cells, so this is the last topic and then we close. In our cells, we have special proteins that are called heat shock proteins, HSPs. They are inside the cell and they are outside the cell. When a cell becomes very hot, so let's say you go above 41 degrees centigrade or you are at 41 degrees centigrade. When a cell becomes very hot, what happens is the cell start, the proteins start becoming denatured, as I just said. These heat shock proteins, they try to fix the denatured proteins. They try to fix them and correct them. And if they cannot correct them, they start the apoptosis process. Apoptosis means cell death. They tell the cell to kill itself because the cell has too much of the machinery not working correctly. So at 41 degrees centigrade, the heat shock proteins are going to first try to help the cell and fix the denatured proteins. And if they cannot, they're going to start the killing of the cell. Similarly, the heat shock proteins that are sitting outside, they are going to cause chemotaxis, chemotaxis of the inflammatory cells. 
So let's say an NK cell comes here, natural killer cell, they bring them here and the natural killer cell is going to kill the cell. So please realize that it is not as simple, it is not as simple as saying that we will heat up the cells or the mouth area or the or the uh, tracheal area or the sorry airway areas and somehow the virus will die they, it would not die even the virus that is present in the mucus uh, mucus fluid the uh, mu mucosa fluid that is not going to die it is like sitting in water when you put the egg in the water the water has to boil before the egg boils if you boil our water here the fluids here to 56 degrees centigrade they're going to burn our cells so you try whatever hot liquids or hot air is only going to cause severe damage, acute respiratory distress syndrome, infections and death of the person if you're trying to kill the virus. Virus will not die. The person would die maybe at 41, 42, 43 degrees centigrade. The person would die. Virus would still be there because virus needs 56 degrees centigrade. So uh, Kelly, thank you very much. Jana is a great, great uh, person. She had been uh, studying with me as well in the past. So thank you very much for your comment and say hi to Jana. So this is all I wanted to discuss today. Once again, our, uh, let me just repeat this for the last time and then we stop. Virus needs 56 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes to be killed. Virus SARS-CoV-2 virus can be replicated easily at 37 degrees centigrade. That is our body temperature. Our cells cannot tolerate more than 41 degrees centigrade or even at 41 degrees centigrade for a longer time. They start coagulating. They start frying like an egg. So we cannot give heat or we cannot give steam to fix the virus which is present in our body. Even hot showers don't do anything. The virus is sitting on our surface. Fine, you can wash the virus away with soap and water. That can be done with the hot or not hot water, but the hot water is not going to kill the virus. You cannot put 56 degree Fahrenheit uh, centigrade on your body for a longer time. Number one, number two, our body is homeostatic. So it is going to correct that temperature back to 37 degrees centigrade. So this is the discussion for today. I'm just very quickly going to look at the comments to see if there is anything useful uh, a question that I should answer. Miguel Prieto, if I am pronouncing your name correctly, that you are most welcome. From Chile, very good. Thank you very much for loving the videos. Rachel, how are you doing? Um, uh, Shashank, Upade, hi sir, how are you? Very good, how are you doing? So thank you guys for your love. And uh, what is this? It hurts my heart you're having to explain this. I understand why you are doing this and you're very kind to but uh, Robert, thank you very much for your kind comment. I keep seeing these things and I keep hearing people are trying these things and it, it hurts me that they are hurting themselves. Uh, somebody had said that alcohol can help and some people uh, drank too much and 41 of them died in Iran after drinking because they were trying to fix their COVID uh, issue. Uh, so the, these things are just making me very sad that there is a there is a natural issue and that is a pandemic going on. And then on top of that, people are creating rumors and they are causing others to, to be impacted and to be injured and harmed. I cannot imagine, I cannot understand who are the people who do these things. Thank you, Khuram Shahzad. Thank you very much. All right. So guys, thank you very much. I'm going to hang up now. We will come back again tomorrow live. We'll talk about vitamin C and D, which I had promised to do it yesterday, but I got these things that needed to be done. So we'll come back up tomorrow. Cool. Thank you.